Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Lab series of video blog presentations on various diverse scientific computing topics. As you can see here, the topic of today's presentation is on how artificial intelligence and machine learning computational techniques can be employed for the sake of accelerating the pace of materials science research and discovery. So, let us begin our main scientific presentation of today. Today, artificial intelligence, AI, is increasingly being embraced in diverse fields, including materials science. In this field, AI finds several applications such as predicting material properties, designing new materials, and identifying process errors. However, achieving desired results through AI technology isn't straightforward. For material specialists to effectively utilize AI, they need a profound understanding of AI-related concepts. With this in mind, I aim to introduce AI technologies and provide guidance on their usage in the materials field. Machine learning is a term often linked with artificial intelligence, AI, and the relationship between the two can be clarified through their definitions. For clarity, I'll refer to the definitions provided by Wikipedia. According to this source, artificial intelligence is a computer program that simulates human learning, reasoning, perception, argumentation, and natural language understanding, or a computer system incorporating such a program. Here, the computer program or computer system refers to a platform realized through a model trained and developed via machine learning. Furthermore, machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that automatically improve with experience and is seen as a subset of artificial intelligence. The phrase improve with experience refers to an algorithm's training process using data. From these definitions, I propose distinguishing the roles of AI and machine learning as follows. AI implements a platform that leverages machine learning technology for decision-making tasks like determination and classification. In contrast, machine learning is about developing a model that can learn complex nonlinear relationships or patterns through data computations. In conclusion, I believe the central components of AI are machine learning algorithms and data. Machine learning, a type of computer algorithm, has quickly evolved with the expansion of big data and computational resources, influencing many aspects of social technology. It operates by creating a model that learns from data. Therefore, the effective use of machine learning doesn't solely revolve around focusing on a particular algorithm, but instead requires a thorough analysis. This involves comparing and interpreting various algorithms in accordance with the data at hand. Machine learning algorithms come in many forms, largely categorized into supervised and unsupervised learning based on whether the data has labels. Reinforcement learning, which provides results over time, is not considered in this classification. A label, or class, refers to the outcome value, dependent variable, corresponding to the input value, independent variable. In supervised learning, where the data is labeled, a model is constructed to predict a value based on the provided outcomes, hence known as a predictive model. Examples of such algorithms include decision trees, support vector machines, SVMs, logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, KNN, naive bays, and neural networks. In contrast, unsupervised learning, which lacks labels, identifies unique characteristics in data and groups data with similar traits. Unsupervised learning is also referred to as an explanatory model, as it organizes created clusters based on current or past data and analyzes them according to their properties. Algorithms used in unsupervised learning include density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, DBSCAN, which creates clusters based on entity density, K-means, which relies on the distance between entities, and hierarchical agglomerative clustering, HAC. Notably, neural networks, initially introduced in supervised learning, have recently found widespread use in unsupervised learning through network application. Selecting the optimal machine learning algorithm for AI involves applying various algorithms in line with the data. Neural networks, algorithms broadly utilized and developed across various fields, are based on principles of neurology and physics. The training process of a neural network model mirrors biological learning through the neurons in the human brain. 
These algorithms also have the distinct advantage of surpassing the constraints of traditional linear classifiers. Classic algorithms such as linear classifiers, decision trees and support vector machines create linear boundaries for data classification and thus, struggle with creating nonlinear boundaries. In essence, they can't overcome the problem of exclusive OR, XOR. This problem can be mitigated by representing data through a kernel, an ensemble that applies various algorithms in a complex way, or a complex network-like algorithm such as a neural network. Neural networks serve as quintessential nonlinear classifiers. Within a network structure, each node can be seen as a classifier that segregates labels. Multilayered neural networks with hidden nodes are influenced by multiple classifiers and can surpass the limitations of linear models by representing data through an activation function. However, they pose a challenge in intuitively interpreting performance results and are consequently known as the black box model. As a result, neural networks are gaining traction in fields that prioritize the significance of results over their interpretability. Recently, neural networks have evolved from their basic structure into advanced deep learning algorithms, such as convolutional neural networks, CNN, and recurrent neural networks, RNN. CNN employs a technique of shifting and applying various sized filters to data. Through the process of convolution, it represents initial values using various filters, and its pooling operation extracts distinctive features from the data. The algorithm then computes a linear predictive value by fully connecting all the features created through repeated convolution. Since CNN is sensitive to the order of neighboring input variables, it performs well with image and text data. On the other hand, RNN features a recurring structure with directional hidden nodes and variable lengths of connection. This algorithm takes into account the significance of sequential information, as input variables are continually trained during the process. As a result, it demonstrates strong performance with time series data. Active research is being conducted in the field of materials science, leveraging neural networks, and there are numerous instances of exceptional performance. Let's explore some of these research studies involving neural networks. The first case involves applying a convolutional neural network, CNN, to a study focused on designing crystalline materials. This research aimed to predict material properties, such as band gap and formation energy, by applying data structures and values to crystal structures and atomic coordination information. The performance was evaluated by comparing the results with those from the density functional theory, DFT. This research model found that the filter's convolution process effectively trained the relationships between successive atomic positions and adjacent atoms, yielding strong performance. In the second case, crystal structures were predicted using diffraction pattern images. This study involved transforming diffraction pattern images, which hold key information about a material's structure, into a linear pattern to enhance the model's learning capability. Furthermore, while filters can train data characteristics, a complex network was applied to learn the features that might otherwise be lost. The data prefilter application was also utilized to boost the predictive performance of space groups. This research demonstrated that transforming point pattern images into shape pattern images and connecting the points improved performance, reducing prediction errors due to similar characteristics in the training data. Also, the approach of using potentially lost information significantly contributed to performance enhancement. Research on machine learning in the materials field tends to concentrate on studies involving neural network algorithms. Accurate prediction is crucial when forecasting properties such as material attributes and structures. However, comprehending predictive performance results can be challenging. In the materials field, Understanding the relationship between input values and their predicted counterparts is as essential as developing highly accurate predictive models. Therefore, the field necessitates understanding algorithms and data with high predictive accuracy, achieved by applying a variety of machine learning algorithms. For a comprehensive understanding of result data, various approaches can be beneficial. These might include comparing the similarities and differences between data with good predictability and data with lesser predictability. Furthermore, when using linear algorithms, 
an intuitive understanding of the results could be possible if the predictive model's performance is high. Ultimately, studies using explanatory models through data clusters, as previously mentioned, are expected to yield meaningful outcomes. Let's now move on to the related but distinct topic of data mining. The process of extracting information from data, heavily reliant on statistical methods, has been a long-standing area of study. Data mining, a term often used in computer engineering, refers to the application of machine learning technology to pull out significant insights from data. Generally, it's simpler to extract information from data that shares common categories or similar features. Therefore, gathering or collecting data is a critical step for effective data analysis. The creation of reliable data is a crucial step in developing machine learning models. If any issues arise during data collection, it could hinder the effective training of the model. Therefore, the data used should be dependable, typically generated in a consistent environment by experts. Using data with ambiguous sources or numerous errors could result in incorrect predictions, despite successful training. Moreover, data collected locally within a common category is often more beneficial for model training than data gathered broadly with diverse characteristics. To use data collected over a wide range, one approach could be to utilize clusters generated via unsupervised learning. Particularly in the materials field, it's important to consider factors like a material's structure, orientation, and composition as constraints. Before using data for machine learning, it must be standardized during preprocessing. This means converting data values into a specific range for more efficient training. Typically, data are standardized to range from 0 to 1. If not, local training could occur, or in more severe cases, training may not happen at all. Additionally, as the number of properties, or columns, of data increases, it can lead to a curse of dimensionality, a situation where the performance of the model decreases. This issue can be addressed by eliminating highly correlated properties and reducing the dimensionality through correlation analysis between properties. Finally, influential properties can be selected through an analysis of the results associated with each property. Data preprocessing, a key aspect of data handling technology, demands an understanding of data structures and types. Data can be categorized as either structured or unstructured. Structured data follows a format that allows it to be organized into rows and columns, much like a table, while unstructured data, such as text, lacks this organized format. However, for data analysis, it's necessary to structure such data. Depending on the structure type, structured data can further be divided into vectors, matrices, arrays, data frames, and lists. Vectors, matrices, and arrays contain consistent data values but differ in dimensions, whereas data frames and lists can include diverse data values. In these latter types, a data value can represent a numeric or character type. In social engineering, table type data primarily utilizes a data frame structure, where each property has a distinct data value. In the field of material science, proficiency in handling data frame structures is crucial due to the variety of data involved. When developing a model, it's crucial to separate the data into training data and test data to avoid overlap. The training data is used to teach the model, while the test data is used to evaluate the model's performance. Typically, the data is split in a 7 to 3 or 8 to 2 ratio, ensuring an even distribution of results. If data labels are unbalanced, in some cases, they may be divided in a 9 to 1 ratio. When dealing with imbalanced data, it's common to use balancing techniques when classifying the data into training and test sets to avoid insufficient learning of less represented values. Oversampling and undersampling are common methods used to prevent skewed labels. Oversampling involves increasing the number of samples for labels that have fewer instances, while undersampling reduces the number of samples for labels with a larger presence, based on labels with fewer instances. When dealing with continuous type values, rather than categorical ones like labels, the values can be arranged in sequence and then divided into training and test data to prevent skewed result values. In the process of model training, 
The batch method used for training data can help adjust the error update between predicted and actual values. There are three types of gradient descent methods, stochastic, batch, and minibatch. First, the stochastic gradient descent method calculates an error generated by a single data point and applies it to the model update. Since updates happen frequently, the speed of convergence can be faster. However, it requires many calculations, which can be time-consuming, and may lead to local minima problems. Second, the batch gradient descent method calculates both the error caused by one data point and the average error of all data points, n, then applies these to the model update. This method requires relatively fewer calculations and tends to converge more stably during training compared to stochastic gradient descent. However, its complexity may increase as it has to consider all errors. Lastly, the most common type, minibatch gradient descent, divides the training data into small groups, or batches. The average error from each batch is then calculated and applied to the model training. If the batch size is small, the speed of convergence increases, but this can introduce noise into the training process. Conversely, if the batch size is large, it allows for a broader application of the error gradient, but the convergence speed decreases. Therefore, the appropriate batch method should be chosen based on the nature of the data and the specific conditions of the experimental environment. Let's examine a research study that applies unstructured data in the materials science field. This study aims to predict thermoelectric materials by analyzing text from a multitude of scientific papers. It gathered approximately 3.3 million abstracts from scientific literature, processed the natural language, and utilized a vocabulary of roughly half a million words. These words were embedded into 200-dimensional vectors and categorized based on their application in material science. The study effectively harnessed vast amounts of unstructured data and transformed it into structured data by quantifying the relationship between commonly occurring words in the literature through data handling. In doing so, it was able to yield significant results as it identified materials with vector distances closely aligned with their respective fields of application. For effective development of machine learning models, it is often more beneficial to utilize localized data for training rather than vast amounts of data. During model development, the focus might be directed towards algorithm types and parameter optimization, or increasing the data volume to reduce errors and prevent underperformance of the model. However, issues concerning data, including its source and creation, must be given due consideration. Specifically, the use of localized and reliable data is often more important than using an extensive and large data range. In conclusion, data quality is just as essential as the machine learning algorithms themselves for efficient AI operations. This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Many thanks for your attention. This presentation was provided in partnership with Virtual Lab, the company behind the development of the Materials Square online platform for executing atomistic materials and chemical computations directly on the cloud. We therefore recommend to please give a try to the Materials Square simulation platform by visiting its corresponding website at www.materialsquare.com or more shortly matsku.com as noted in the present slide or alternatively also in the video description below. Furthermore, please do not hesitate to contact us by email, as also shown here on this slide, in case you would like to obtain further information on the various R&D services and solutions for materials and molecular modeling applications that we can provide at Virtual Lab. Many thanks again for your interest and your consideration.